How to create superhero brass. Let's take a look. Hi there, this is Sam with Second Tier Sound. Really nice to see you here. As you might know, I create videos on how to orchestrate and create music on a DAW. I work with Cubase, but other DAWs work as well. If that interests you, maybe subscribe and hit that like button. I also wanted to add that I have started a Patreon page if you're interested in supporting me. I will link it down below. So let's get on with today's video. How to create that epic superhero brass sound? Well, that's what today's video is about. I just wanted to say that I'm using East and West Hollywood Brass. So uh, this song is a little bit geared towards that library. But if you don't have it, you can still use another library and get about the same results. So I just wanted to add something that I found out quite recently and I was just looking for a way to put it out in a video and before I did, somebody commented about it uh, very nicely. But if you have missed this, you know that East and West can sometimes take quite a bit to load. And this is a great trick that really speeds that up and it works. Just make sure that your antivirus does, uh, is excluding the library. So just go into your virus program and make sure to exclude the folder where the East and West is located. And I guarantee you, you will see East and West load much faster. So make sure you do that. Okay. Let's get on with the video. Okay, let's dive deep into how to create epic superhero brass. I wanna say I've gone quite detailed and that is not always necessary, but I'm just showing you what is possible here. Okay, so what I do when I work this way is that I usually start with the piano track because it's easy, you know, you don't have to worry about latencies or patch problems. It just loads up quickly and I get my ideas. So I started by writing this. So when I've done that, then I start to work on my brass parts. And it looks like, wow, this is a lot. Well, I just wanted to mention that in another video I have done, I'm showing that you can create these sort of key switch patches yourself with East and West by using expression maps. But I didn't realize that only the pro version of Cubase has this. So here I'm showing how you do it, the way actually this library was created by having mid channels, to your main channel. So I have trumpets and then a bunch of midi channels and then I have horns, French horns, a bunch of midi channels, trombones, blah, 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 and so on and tuba. And it might seem like a lot, <clears throat> but if you have it as, as a template, it's not that much. Uh, and also Cubase has a nice function. You basically just click there and then it's only showing the channels that are used. Uh, I'm not gonna do that today, uh, but that's another way to make it seem less confusing. But I just wanted to show you quickly here in the East and West that I have a patch that I've created. I've shown this is in another video as well, where I have all these different uh, articulations loaded already. In this case, we don't need that many. In, in most cases, when you need fun, fair uh, patches, you can do really well with just the shorts mod versions of East and West. You can do... So you have access to all those different articulations with a mod wheel. And in this case, it's almost everything you need. So let's uh, listen to this little thing, how it sounds like all together. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the way I have uh, divided this up. I have trumpets at the top. It's almost like the string family. If you think of violins at the top, the trumpets at the top, then the French horn come later, the mid register. And then I have trombones and lastly, tuba. Now tubas and trombones can play about the same register. Bass trombone can go as low, but I find that the tuba has a warmer, rounder sound. So I like to have that at the bottom as the bass. And the usually my trombones work as an octave or a fifth above. And what I normally do is that I take a, uh, for example, this, we have the horns suspended accent patch because it's not a legato. And that means I can play several things at the same time.
more like a piano. And that's not the most natural sound, but it gives me a way to sort of play a little bit with the instrument. Because even though the piano is really good to get your ideas and your harmonies out, sometimes by just hearing a more brass sounding instrument, you get more ideas. Just play around with that. And French horn is really good because it has a fairly good register. And yes, the main workhorse here is basically your shorts. As I said before, you can create most of them. And as you can see, I have used most of that. Let's go in to look at the three trumpets short and I'm gonna select the legato I've used here as well. I've selected three trumpets because it's a bigger sound. Okay, in here we can see I start with the shorts here and then I go over to legato here. I've doubled actually here to get a little more attack and then back to the shorts. I could have used the shorts the whole way but I just wanted that swell that I created in, in the legato patch and I felt like it sounded a little bit better with the legato and also I get a little bit of a slur here. Okay, let's listen to just that one. So the way East and West works that you, in order to get good dynamics, good expression, you want to work mainly with the mod wheel and the velocity. The velocity here, as you see, creates louder attack, louder sound. You have higher velocity and lower the other way around. So you see, I've worked that a little bit here. And then you really want to go into your modulation. And this is where you work. Because this patch, if I play here on the lowest, if I have nothing, the module all the way down, it's a short sound. And all the way up, it's an infinite long. In between they have a few different marcatos. Yeah? That's a staccato. So different versions. So you have to figure those out. I think there are about four or five, depending on the patch, different uh, layers. Uh, you can see that in the library itself if you um, look at it. Let's see if I can get it up here. You can see here they put the numbers here so you know. But I've also noticed that they don't match exactly. So double check there. Sometimes there's a number or two different than what it says here. So you don't, you don't have to be super precise, but just so you know that maybe go a little bit beyond 78, for example, if you want to have a Macarta long. Yeah. Okay. So then I basically just draw in here. And what is important is that you draw it before the next note. You can see here, not on the note, because then it doesn't trigger in time. It doesn't have time to trigger it. So... So just a little bit before uh, the next note, you see I have changed the dynamics so that the long trigger is happening. See, I'm always a little bit before. You can see here are three shorts out of four. And then the next one, I want a little bit longer. And you might have thought, oh, that, was, that sounded the same to me. It is a little bit different. It's just a slightly longer. This is staccatissimo and this is staccato. Just add that realism. This goes quite, quite fast. And then with legato. And here, as you can see, uh, I have a little bit higher. I want a longer macato. Because if I had the shortest selected here, if this was the shortest, yeah, so that makes a difference. I want this longer macato sound. As you can see, you can create most of this with just this patch, the shorts patch with the mod wheel. I have tied all these notes together pretty much like it's a legato. And this is just a recommendation. You don't have to do that. And you certainly don't have to, you know, put everything perfectly to the grid as I've done. I've just done that to be clear. And so it's easy for you to see what I'm doing, but that's not necessary. But I usually uh, use the legato so that all the notes are tied because these short notes it's a recorded performance from the trumpet player. And if you cut the note before, even though it's this short, you sometimes lose the tail that is here. You can hear that on this longer tone here. Note, sorry. Yeah. It sort of stops playing here, but then the tail goes down. So if I cut it here, it works. It sounds pretty good because I have a reverb on. Uh, but if you didn't have that reverb, you, it would sound more cut off. So it sounds more natural that way. So you get a natural arc that you don't have to record yourself. You don't have to change the expression, okay? 
especially here. If you had a long note, a ba da 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 da, that would be different than ba 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 ba. You understand? Sort of the arc goes down a little bit before and makes the sound more natural. So I record the melody, play it in, I use the legato, and then I use the articulations. If necessary, I work with the velocity if I want a stronger or softer note. And absolutely last, if necessary, I go into the expression and work a little bit with the volume if there needs to be a sort of crescendo or diminuendo. If you find that the marcato or the staccato are not the length you want, then obviously you can go in and lower it a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty much what I've done for all the different parts here. Now there's one more thing I want to show in the French horns. You see I have lots of different one French horn, two and six. This you can do if you want, if you find it useful. I find that it sounds way better. What I've done here, well, if you go to this part here, it's not that much. See, just one note. And then I want all the six players to play because I want that big sound. But here, when they go on, I want it to be consistent dynamically, so I always have six players. So suddenly in here, I have chords, triads, and so I don't want it to sound like 18 players. I want it to sound like six players. So I have used a two horns patch here. You don't have to do this. And if it sounds like a lot of work, it isn't because I played this all in using just this patch. And then I just moved over the notes that I wanted to be here. So it's not a lot of work to do this actually. And since these patches work exactly the same, it's very easy to do. So that's up to you. But I like that way because then it's consistently six players all the time. Six players, one note, three players, three notes, two players each becomes six. And that's the way I've done it. And otherwise the technique is exactly the same as the trumpets. Okay. In the trombones, uh, I've done just the short pads that you need anything else. And in the tuba, the same. In general, the tuba plays the bass for me. The trombones can also do that, but I've done it, if you think about the string family, the cello and the contrabass, they usually play an octave apart or a fifth. So that's what I've done here as well. The tuba is the bass note, basically, and then the trombones are doing fifths or uh, an octave when necessary. And that's a pretty good standard arrangement. You can definitely do it other ways, but as a start, really good idea. And then the horns here are the mid-range, so I have a lot of chords here. Not too tight, can be done, but usually triads or fourths are really nice. And in general, I put more chord notes in here. And then trumpets, I generally do melody. Since the trumpets are higher up, it's easier to have tighter intervals there, like thirds or seconds. The higher you go, the shorter the distance between the intervals. The lower you go, the bigger the distance, otherwise it starts to sound muddy and weird. What does it sound like with the tuba and the trombone together? Yeah, it's kind of a growly sound. But what have I done to make this even bigger? Well, I haven't done it yet, but I will show you a few tricks you can do to make this even bigger. Well, the first thing to do is to add a nice convolution reverb so you sound like they're in a big hall and basically search for any hall so you get that big sound if you turn this off it still works it has a little bit of reverb east and west itself but if you want that big sound you want to use these so i put this on the main bus uh, you can also create an aux or a send effect, and then you can have a little bit more control of it. But just because in this case, I wanted them all to be in the same place, I just put it on the main bus and I lowered the mix a little bit. And then you get that big, big, massive sound. You know, you want to sound like they're playing in space. Uh, another thing you can do is to add something that is not so realistic, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> I hope you could hear that. Uh, maybe you need headphones, but I added some low rumble. And this is a patch called Low Brass in East and West. I'm sure other libraries have similar stuff. In any case, what I did 
is that I actually added an effect that I'm sure all DAWs have. It's a free plugin, you know, called Octave or Octave or something similar to that. And what it does basically, it just adds, uh, it pitches down the sound an octave. Uh, and then it lowers the volume a little bit on both, so it sounds even. You can even go an octave even lower than that, but I found that was too much. It's a very simple effect. So this is how it sounds with the effect. So let's remove that. So it's a subtle little effect, but you hear that low rumble. So I didn't work too hard on this patch because it's not heard so much. It's just rumbling, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But I think it adds an extra low bass to the whole thing. Yeah, another thing you can do is obviously add percussion. You get sort of that uh, John Williams Star Wars feel. And that's because he uses funfairs a lot. Okay, uh, another thing you can do also is to add an X trumpet on the top. And now I've added just one player because it's so high up that it's easily to hear. You don't need a lot of power up there. So I hope that was useful for you. Uh, if you found it useful, perhaps hit that like button or even subscribe if you haven't already. And also, I just want to say, if you're interested in these MIDI files, then head over to Patreon and my Patreon page that I've linked below, and you can have access to those if that interests you. Until next video, have a great time. Hope to see you soon.